else to step in and intervene for you but you you got to fight on because if you can fight God says that you can win am I talking to any winners out there this morning am I talking to any winners out there this morning am I talking to any winners out there this morning that's saying to themselves I'm willing to fight so that I can hear him say, well done. This is your opportunity to invite somebody else to worship with you. Invite somebody else to share in this word with you this morning. I pray that God meets you where you are. As we prepare, grab your smartphones, grab your tablets, grab your Bibles, grab everything you might have that can get you in the word of God. Go with us to the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew the 14th chapter. Matthew 14. You fight on. your sword in your hand. Yes, and you fight on. Gospel. According to Matthew, the 14th chapter, we'll begin reading at the 27th verse. As we begin this series for the month of December, entitled My reality. This morning, we're going to have an approach to this gospel to help you see the reality that we face day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And there's certain realities that if we don't face them, we will never defeat them. So I want to push you into 2021 with strategy that strategically helps you conquer giants in your lives. <clears throat> so Matthew, the 14th chapter, 27th verse says, Immediately, Jesus said, Calm down. It's me. Don't be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, 
and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he noticed how strong the wind was, he became afraid and started to sink. He shouted, Lord, save me. Father, we decrease that you may increase. We step down that you may step up. Help us to articulate your word with clarity, power, and authority. It is in you that we put our trust. And it's in you and through you that we do all things. Jesus the Christ, it's in that name. Amen. Immediately, Jesus said, calm down. It's me. Don't be afraid. Peter to answer, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he noticed how strong the wind was, he became afraid and started to sink. He shouted, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. I want to preach in the beginning of this series from the title of this message this morning. Don't stop moving forward. Don't. Stop moving forward. Life is not always easy and oftentimes harder than what you've expected. But what makes things even more difficult is when life realities hit and the ones that have been riding with you just for their convenience and not your purpose is realized. Have you ever Caught yourself in a situation just to find out that the ones you thought was with you really wasn't with you. Have you ever found yourself in a situation and the ones that you thought were riding with you and was going to go with you were the ones that really didn't have your best interests at heart? But can I tell you this morning that in the reality of life, you got to understand that there will be some that go with you and then there will be some that fall before you. There will be some that give up. There will be some that's willing to walk away. But can I tell you that you cannot allow how others feel or how they think to upset your peace and where God is trying to take you. You have to be careful that you don't miss God worrying about people. You have to be careful that you don't miss God worrying about who didn't come and who stayed. Life is hard. Life is difficult. Life is challenging and that is my reality. My reality is there are some times I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to start. But I understand that as long as I got God. Starting over is always easier. Yeah, yeah, as long as I got God, it doesn't matter who falls away. It doesn't matter who strays. If I have him, I have more than enough to start back over again. So regardless of those that did not ride with you, don't allow that to be the determining factor. Rather, you're going to, or rather you're going to go or you're going to stay. Never anticipate the highest applauders to go with you. Right. I know, I know. You, you're, you're used to the noise. You're used to the sound. You're used to the praises. So there's a, an expectancy that we are expecting from others. But let me tell you something. Just because they're clapping and they're all loud doesn't mean that they're applauding for you. No, no, it doesn't mean that they're willing to go with you. So never anticipate the highest applauders to go with you. Can I tell you that people
people who says that they're riding with you and for you normally are the ones who stay behind. Yeah, I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but my reality is from what I've experienced, normally the ones that say that they are going with you are the ones that stay behind. They're the ones that give you every excuse. I would have gone, but this. Oh, I would have come, but this. I would have came, but this. I, I, I would have been a part of it, but this. But don't allow this to suck up. Don't allow this to cause an unsettling in your spirit to face the reality that just because they are applauding doesn't mean that they are applauding for you. Just because they are praising doesn't mean that they are praising for you. The people who stays or the people that says that they're riding with you are normally the ones that stay behind. But don't allow what others are doing to distract you from where you're going. I know you, you, you feel like you, you really need this thing in order to go to the next level. I know that you feel that you really need this thing in order for God to really do what he's getting ready to do in your lives. But you got to understand that you cannot allow what they are doing to distract you from where God is trying to take you. The conclusion of a thing is the introduction to something else. Oh yeah, it's the introduction to what God is getting ready to do next in your life. It's easy to change a person environment, but it takes an act of God to change a set thinking pattern. No, you can't change the minds of people that set in their ways. You can't change the minds of people that may not believe how you believe. You can't change the minds of people that may not see God how you see God. But it's okay because everybody can't go with you. It's okay because everybody can't see God how you see God. We are not the same. We are on a different level. And my reality is, it was faith that got me here. And it will be faith that keeps me. I know that you expect the next person to pay your bill. I know that you are expecting the next person to open up a door. I know that you are expecting the next person to make a way. But if I can be honest, the only reason I'm in the place that I am in is simply because of the grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side... I don't know where I would have been. Oh, but it's simply because of him that I'm moving, that I'm breathing, and that I have my being. But let me tell you something. You have to be careful of who you allow in your space. Why? Because Peter is now walking on water. Not because it's comfortable. Not because it's easy. Not because he's sure, but because it's necessary. What are you saying, Pastor Till? Sometimes uh, it's not our environment that needs changing, uh, but our circles. Yeah, uh, somebody needs to catch that. Uh, sometimes uh, it's not our environment uh, that needs changing, uh, but our circles. Uh, because limited thinking uh, produces limited results. Uh, yeah, you're trying to figure out why you can't go any further. Uh, you got to check the circle. Uh, maybe somebody doesn't believe uh, how you believe. Uh, maybe you're too busy trying to build, uh, and they're too busy trying to tear down. Now, maybe you're trying to establish, but they're too busy trying to tear apart. So you got to be careful of who's in your circle. You got to make sure that they can see God as clearly as you can. As clearly as you can. Yeah, if you continue bringing the wrong people with you in the right environment, your results become the same. There will always be the watchers, and then you have the doers. Never allow people who are going nowhere determine where you're going. Oh, no, no, no. You allow too many people that's going nowhere to give you too much commentation or commentary on where they feel like you should do or where they feel like you should go. You got to be careful of who you allow in your space. So the Bible says here in the gospel, according to Matthew, that Jesus had just fed the 5,000, not including women and children. And he sends them off and he goes up into the mountain to pray. And while praying, 
being, he sees that there's a storm out on the water and is now troubling his disciples. So the Bible says that Jesus is walking on water. He's walking on water. He's walking on the very thing that's troubling them. He's walking on the very thing that's upset their environment. He's walking on the very thing that's causing chaos in their lives. He's walking on the very thing that has them fearful of what's the next step. He's walking on the very thing that you felt like he was impossible or incapable of doing. But let me tell you something. It's not until your incapabilities Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that God is able to show you his ability. It's not until God shows you that he's able to perform the very thing that you're incapable of doing. So the Bible says that Jesus is walking on the water. And the disciples become fearful. They become afraid. And they said, listen, it's a ghost. We don't know what to do. We didn't come prepared for this. We didn't expect this. My reality is, I did not expect to see what I'm seeing in the season that I'm in. What happens when God tells you to go? But he never tells you what you're going to encounter. What happens when God instructs you to go further? But he never tells you the adversity that's facing you. Have you ever found yourself in a place that God gave you a word, but he didn't tell you that trials were attached to it? Have you ever found yourself in a place and you God gave you a word, but he didn't tell you that heartache was attached to it? Have you ever found yourself in a place and God gave you a word, but he didn't tell you that tears came with it. But can I tell you something? If God has instructed you with the word, understand that he's capable of fulfilling the very thing that you're in. I don't care how ugly it looks. I don't care how rough it seems. I don't care how the wind blows. If God has instructed you, he has the ability to fulfill the promise that he's made. If you can see beyond the things in life that has boxed you in, then you, if you can't see beyond those things, then you can't tell me what's outside of the box. No, 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 I, you thought that you could. I know that you got good commentary, but you can't tell me about my life if you've never been nowhere in life. No, no, you can't tell me what God can do if you never believe him to do anything for you. So the Bible says now that they saw Jesus walking on the water, and Jesus is walking on the water, but the disciples are feeling Oh, they're scared. It's a ghost. We don't know who it is because we didn't come expecting this. Yeah, that's just like life. Life throws things at you that you do not expect. Oh, you thought life was gravy, huh? You thought life was good, huh? Oh, you thought life was just going to add up and play out how you expected. But what happens when life throws curveballs at you in a game that you didn't even sign up for? Oh, yeah, yeah. What happened when life throws curveballs at you in a game that you didn't opt in. Yeah, life sometimes will hit you so hard that it will knock you off balance. But let me tell you something. That although life may knock you off balance, don't stop moving forward. Why? Because I understand that what I'm waiting for is beyond the adversity. What I'm believing God for is beyond anything that I'm facing. But in order for me to reach it, I cannot stop moving forward. That's my reality. My reality is life has happened, but I don't know what to do. The reality is the disciples are in the boat and there's a storm out. Yeah, the reality is they really don't know what to do. They really don't know where they're going. They really don't know if God going to come through. All they know is that they, he put them in a boat and he told them to go to the other side. But hold on, that's a prophecy within itself. If he's giving you instructions to go to the other side, he's giving you confirmation that regardless of what you may encounter in the middle of going through, you're going to come out. You just got to get to the other side. Well, let me tell you something. He says, I know you're in before your beginning. He says, so if I've spoken over your life, I've already confirmed that you're going to come out of it if you can keep moving forward. See, the reason why some of us sink is because we become distracted in the storm. The Bible says that Jesus tells them, don't be afraid. It's me. 
Peter being, Peter says, listen, he says, Jesus, if it's you, he says, command me to come. He says, give me instructions to come to you. So the Bible says that Jesus tells Peter, come. And Peter gets out of the boat and he begins to walk on the water. But can I tell you something? Don't get upset or angry when your next level of support doesn't come from those around you. Oh yeah, you thought that it was going to come from those that were in the boat with you. No, 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 no. His next level of support came from something that was outside of the boat. Because that thing that was outside of the boat seemed more purpose in him than those that were around him in the boat. I don't care how long you've been friends. Sometimes they will not support you. I don't care how long you've known each other. Sometimes they won't support you. I don't care if they birthed you out of their womb. Sometimes they will not support you. I don't care if they was your daddy. Sometimes they will not support you. But at the end of the day. Don't become angry. Don't become upset when your next level of support doesn't come from those that are around you. Just keep moving forward because what God has secured for you doesn't come from who's with you, but it comes from who's in front guiding you. Come, 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 come Peter. Come Peter. If God is for me, he's more than anything else that is against me. But to see your next, you must embrace your now. Maybe you're not seeing the full picture. It's simply because you haven't taken the first step. And if you can take the first step, the reality will become your reality that we walk by faith and not by sight. So I may not see it, but I'm crazy enough to believe that if he said it, then I'm going to keep moving as he make my step plain. I'm going to keep moving until he makes my steps plain. How many of us ask God and when he gives us his word, we become distracted. Peter asked the Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. Then Jesus said, come. Yeah, Jesus says come, but Jesus tells Peter to come, but he doesn't tell Peter. He does not tell Peter of all of the attachment that comes along with the come. Can I tell you something that God will give you to come, but he will not give you the information or tell you the attachments that come along with the come. Yeah. Oh, no, you thought that being saved was going to be easy. Oh, you thought that accepting him, it was going to be howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. We're going to skip down the streets of gold, and the half has never been told. But let me tell you something. With your acceptance of the call, then you accept the responsibility of the adversity that comes along with it. Because the Bible says that many of the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord yeah yeah that's the clause right there but the Lord will deliver him out of them all so Peter tells Jesus if it's you ask me to come and I'm going to come but I don't know what's attached with it I don't know about you but I've asked God to tell me to do something not knowing the attachments and then we get out there and then we want to change our mind yeah, we get out there and then we want to tell God, I don't know if I can do this again. I, I think I want to go back to the boat that I just got out of because the thing that was more comfortable to me was more convenient. But let me tell you something that you can't have change and be comfortable at the same time. No, 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 you can't have growth and be settled at the same time. No, you can't go to the next level trying to stay on the same level that you're at right now. So God tells Peter, he says, come and Peter steps out of the boat. And when he see the water uh, treading under his feet, why? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, life sometimes uh, can be so rough uh, that it seems unsettling. Uh, and things are treading under your feet. Uh, things are rolling under your feet. Uh, the wind is blowing from here and there. Uh, trials are coming from each and every way. Uh, I don't know whether I'm coming. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, I don't know if I can stand. Uh, I don't know if I can make it. Uh, I've got more bills than i got money. Uh, I've got more stress uh, than i got peace. Uh, I have more problems. Uh, i got nine. 99 problems. Listen, and my faith is in one. But God, how do I maximize my faith over my adversity? Let me tell you something. The how in it is that you keep moving forward. 
keep moving forward because you can't afford to be distracted where you are. No, how many of us ask God to give us this? And then he shows us, is this really what you want? We can't allow who's not coming to distract us from going. We can't allow what we encounter to stop us from coming. Regardless of what happened and what is taped, oh, never stop moving. No, never stop moving forward. So Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water to Jesus. But when he noticed how strong the wind was, he became afraid and started to sink. Isn't it when you pay more attention to the things that are not important, you will start sinking. The moment you take your eyes off of God is the moment you will start sinking. The moment you start trying to add up the bills to the money that you have, you won't have enough. The moment you start trying to make sense out of what God is trying to do, it just don't make sense. Oh, The moment you're trying to be God, you become stressful. But let me tell you something. Nobody can beat God at being God. And if he tells you to come, that means he secured the very thing you're getting ready to walk on. So he tells Peter, he says, Peter, I've given you instruction to come. So don't worry about your steps. Understand that they're being ordered by me. I've already secured the very thing I called you on. And that is the reality. My reality is if my feet are placed it in him uh, that he has secured uh, where I'm going. Uh, I just got to keep moving forward. It's when you pay more attention oh, to the things that's not important that you start sinking. Jesus didn't ask you how much money you had towards the vision. No, no, no. He didn't ask you which way you thought would be the best to get his results. No, he didn't ask you how you think coming should be handled. He just said or gave you instructions to come. No, don't allow circumstances around you to determine how you're moving. I know you feel like they have to be up and up. They got to work out just how you expect them in order for you to move forward. But if God gives you the command to come and he's already secure what you're getting ready to walk in. Oh yeah, he's already secured it. So the Bible says that Peter gets out of the boat and because he has to separate himself from the reality that they may not come with me but I got to keep moving forward. He has to separate himself from the reality that mama and them may not go but I cannot allow how mama and them see it to make me doubt God's ability to do it. Oh, Peter had to separate himself because he had to know that he was the outsider and they were the insiders. How many of us have limited ourselves because we boxed ourselves inside of the boat? You got to understand that the boat may represent being boxed in. When God is saying I'm trying to get you to walk by faith and walk on the very thing that was sent to destroy you. If you can face it, then you can defeat it. But you gotta keep your eyes on me and understand that if I can stand for you, I'm more than anything that may come up against you. He says, so the wind may blow. He says, the waves may roll. He says, but Peter, keep moving forward. He says, keep moving forward. He says, keep moving forward. He says, you gotta keep moving forward. He says, because there's something that I need you to see, Peter. If God can give you my instructions. If God can give you the instructions, then he says, I'm God enough to pull you out of it. See, the reality of life is adversity is going to happen, but you can't secure the relationship until God allow you to secure the, the relationship you have with him. Until you secure the relationship, then you can't secure the bag. I know they're trying to secure the bag first, but let me tell you something. Something. It's not until you secure the relationship that you're capable of securing the bag. Oh, you thought that you could just do it on your own. You thought that you could make it on your own. You thought that you could figure it out on your own. But what Peter had to understand that God was trying to see if he could have the relationship that he needed to have to trust God even the more. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? You gotta trust God even when you cannot trace him. You gotta trust God even when you don't know where he's going. Because
because if he's given you a word, he's faithful to fulfill it. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? He gave them the instructions and he told them to cross to the other side. But isn't that just like God? He will tell you you can do it, but he never tells you what you will face. He will tell you that there's purpose, but he never tells you the adversity. He will tell you it will be okay, but he never tells you about the tears that you will have to cry all night long, asking him why is it me? But can I tell you something? That he's the same God that will render you peace if you can only believe. So the Bible says that Jesus calls Peter and Peter steps on the word and the word was God because in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word became flesh and it dwelt among us well what are you saying it was the same word that was standing on the water that was the same word that stood in the beginning and said let the firmaments be separated and we call the high the heavens and we will call the low in the earth and that will be the ocean and this will be the sky well I came to tell somebody that the same word that spoke it into existence and caused it to become calm and caused it to become separated is the same word that he gave unto Peter and he said Peter come I came to tell somebody that if God gave you a word I don't care how it looks keep moving forward because his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and if I got a word I got everything I need if I got a word I can step in the middle of the most raging storm and he will give me peace if I got a word I can step on the very thing that others took in and I can stand strong because thy word if I hid in my heart if I hid it in my heart I got the strength to stand against anything so Peter came out and the word of God because he understood although he said five thousand not including women and children that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God and if that same word I have to come to him I will come in my own might I will not come but by my own strength but I in this one thing that if I can believe he's able to fulfill it so the Bible said that Peter stepped on the water and left the other disciples in the boat right where they were can you imagine John sitting there Peter must be crazy can you imagine Matthew sitting there Peter must have lost his mind can you imagine Judas sitting right there I don't know who he think he is but let them talk as much as they want to talk because if God gave you a word that he's faithful to fulfill it you gotta hang on to it and you gotta keep moving forward because the reality is somebody may not go but I will go if I have to go all by myself because I believe that if he said it well able to from what he said and I know that the word of God is strong enough to help me there anything that I'm under because if I got the word I believe I can step in the middle of nothing and all that I need he will provide if I got a word I may have the vision but he's the God of provision if I got a word Just move forward. Just move forward. Yes. 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 Just move for
I know you want to stay right there, but just move forward. I know you're worrying about who's still with you, but just move forward. I know you're worrying about who's talking about you, but just move forward. I know you're worried about who don't accept you, but just move forward. I know you're worried about who don't like you, but just move forward. Just move forward. Why? Because you cannot take hold of your destiny until you step out of the thing that has defined you. I can no longer afford to be defined by what I'm in. I got to step out of it. Peter says, listen, Bro, anything is better than what I'm in right now. Just tell me to come. I, I, I don't know. I've never walked on water. Mm -hmm. He says, but if you can do it, I can do it too. Do you have enough faith in God to believe him with crazy faith that if he said it, he's capable to perform it? In your life. But what it is. Is. We normally. In our reality. Don't anticipate. Adversity. We don't anticipate problems. We don't anticipate. Trouble. We don't anticipate. Life. Because we've been sold. A false hope that life is like chocolate. Life is so sweet. Everything's supposed to add up. Everything's just supposed to happen how I expect it. But when life really happens, we break, we fold. And we doubt God's ability to be God in our lives. But Peter says, anything is better than where I am. That's my reality. I already don't have enough. I can't fund my own vision. It takes too much. I need strategy and a plan from God. I need provision from God. I, I know. I know you may be the smartest person in the room. You got the biggest brain. I'm not smart enough to even imagine what his plan really is for my life. Come on. Peter could have easily said, come on, Jesus, come step right in here with us. But he defied the odds. He says, because I can't look like where I am when you've called greater out of me. The reality is there's greater that's in you. But it's not going to work according to the power that's in you until you step up to the plate to release it unto God. Come. I've already secured what you're getting ready to walk on. Water is troublesome. It's troublesome. Very. Water is shaky. Water moves Right, left, front, to back. It moves every which way. That the wind may blow it. But God secures him in a storm to let him know that even in the most unstable position and place, I'm the God that will render you peace. If you can get out of the boat. He says, if you can get out of the box and release your mind, he says, eyes haven't seen and, and ears haven't heard. What are you saying, Pastor Tim? He says, no one have even visualized or even heard of the things that I have in store for you. But you got to be able to defy the odds and walk on the impossible because we call that faith. Faith. 
is the substance of things hoped for. And it is the evidence of things that's not seen. Now faith. So, you cannot allow your circumstances around you to determine how you're moving. The reality of life is adversity is going to happen. Storms are going to come. Yeah. Uncertainties will be there. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. But if you can secure your relationship with Jesus, he'll secure the bag that you're chasing. If you can secure your relationship with Jesus, then he'll show you that he can do the impossible. We've lost too much sleep worrying about who stayed and who's going when God has instructed you. Don't stop moving forward. Just because they don't believe shouldn't stop you from moving. Keep moving forward. My reality is I'm going to keep going regardless of who goes with me. I pray that this word has blessed you this morning. I pray that it challenge your heart. As we begin to end this year, you're willing to face your reality. And the start of it is, if God is for me, it doesn't matter what comes up against me. I will survive. I'll survive. You'll survive. We will survive. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I'm here to pray with you this morning. Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. I need you. I believe that you came from heaven into the earth. You carried the sins of the world to the cross. You died with them and took them into the grave. And for three days, you were there. But you got up with all power in your hands. And now you're sitting on the right hand of the Father. I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart. That you are my Savior and my Lord. I'm praying that God fills you with his Holy Spirit. So that you will have a guide. A director in your life. Listen. I pray that this week is a great and successful week. As this day is declared the great and successful day. For all those that are giving give online under the Source Church Facebook link give online but you can also give by cash app dollar sign Source Church SC dollar sign Source Church SC I pray that God continues to bless you abundantly overflow more than enough we are the heads and not the tails we are the lenders and not the bar and we are above and not beneath understand this as you continue to move forward, God will seclude you just to save you. Yeah. God will have you step out of the very thing that you're in just to change how you were thinking, to show you that I'm God enough to fulfill my word. I'm Pastor Tim, and we are the Source Church. I pray that this word meets you at your need. May God continue to bless you. I bless you. Have a blessed, wonderful week. <laughs>